Hi everyone, Dustfingers here, and I'm here to talk more about Obsidian Notes for D&D prep. Today we're going to be going a bit more in depth about some of the more advanced features of Obsidian Notes, things I've learned about it since last time, and how I use the, temp the templates for NPCs and NPCs in general as the backbone to my world building. A lot of this is an evolving guide, so things I share now may not be as relevant when you're viewing it, or I may come out with updates for it. So tune in, hit the subscribe button, and you'll get notified when I come out with new parts of this, uh, of this playlist. So to start off, let's talk about the resources I got from the fine folks over at Reddit. These were recommended to me by JP Skiplore and King Follower. There's a few different ones and I'm going to display them on the screen here and I will put them in the description so that anyone can use them. The first one that we're going to talk about is this Patreon post. Copy it in here. This is a way to um, turn Obsidian into a campaign manager. I don't have all of these enabled, but I've gone through and added a, definitely the core plugin ones. The community plugins are a bit more extended. And I would definitely recommend it, probably doing them one at a time so that you don't get overwhelmed with features. And as for the editors, I haven't actually checked this out yet, but it seems like it is a perfectly reasonable set of recommendations. The Brat plugin is something I have not played with at all. And when I do, I will let all of you know how I found it. So just for some of these core plugins, uh, most of this is about links, panes, templates, slash commands, stars, things that we've used in our previous videos um, that we're now just getting in addition. The tag pane is definitely something I'm glad I found out. This just shows you the tag for the entire document, how often they're used. You can click into them to quickly search and go to the descriptions. Now, a bit more about um, the, the next, the Sorry, the next resource is Discord. Uh, Discord.gg slash ObsidianMD is the official Obsidian Discord. Here you can search for TTRPG guides. Uh, you can search for how people are using this in their campaigns and world buildings. People have come up with entire systems to make organization easier and better. I haven't used any of them myself personally because I'm still new to this and learning, but highly recommend go join them, be a good contributor, and find out all the great things they have to offer. Next would be the Facebook group, Obsidian TTRPG Users. I will show this on the screen. And again, um, actually, I'm going to not just to keep my Facebook private, <laughs> but Obsidian TTRPG Users. I will link this below for anyone to go in and use. It's a quick application to join, and the admins will approve you. You can see what other people are doing. Next up is 5e Obsidian on GitHub by Twister Obsidian. So. This is 5e Obsidian. This is basically the whole SRD remastered and used as a directory for reference in Obsidian. I don't use this personally as I use D&D Beyond for pretty much all of my referencing, but this seems to be a great resource for those of you who don't have as large, do not have subscriptions to D&D Beyond or may not have uh, digital versions of the books and want to have those encounters run through Obsidian. Finally, we have um, a user that was recommended to me on YouTube as well who makes videos about using Obsidian for D&D. Uh, this is... Hi, everyone. I'm Nicole. This is Nicole Vanderhoven. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She has a great uh, video on how to use Obsidian and run D&D online. I'm making my own series of this as I, I think I have some unique viewpoints, but definitely go check her out and give her a follow. So now that we've covered all of that, let's talk about a plugin that is a little bit more advanced. This is going to be the data view plugin. Now, in order to get the data view plugin, you go to community plugins. You're going to enable, turn off safe mode and uh, click OK on the warning, browse, and then go and find data view. It's the fourth most, pop most popular, I believe, uh, in the Obsidian library. Data view lets you take all of these tags like I've talked about before and actually search and index by them. So. I will show some examples of how I use that and how I'm growing my system to take advantage of what Obsidian has to offer. So let's say that we had an NPC, and I'll actually just use something from my current campaign. We had Girda. Um, Girda was a delivery person, and the party interacted with them, so I built out a small sheet. Now, Girda has some tags here, right? They're tagged as a person, and person to me just encompasses anything effectively that is not a monster. Um, and a city, Geldoth. Now, when I go to the city, Geldoth, I can see that under residence, Girda is here. Now, I haven't actually manually linked these in here. I've used this incredible plugin called DataView. 
to use data view, let's jump into our source mode. You're going to have three back ticks that, and then three below it. You're going to put data view next to these three back ticks, no space. And then you effectively get to use SQL, which is a programming language that allows you to search through databases. Data view basically turns Obsidian into a database for you. Here we can see I'm asking for a list where files dot, where file dot tags contains person and the city tag is Geldof. I'm also doing this for shops and I'm doing this for the factions folder. If you put something in quotes, it's going to look for that folder. There are other ways to use data view and I highly recommend doing your own research and seeing what you can find out about it as well. You could drop a question in uh, the chat below in the comments below, and I'll let you know if I can help you out. Um, and I can even make a video about it if it would be helpful. So that's something that I've just added into my campaign and has really added a lot of uh, quality of life. So now anytime I go to the city, I can see exactly what's here. You can make larger tables with this. I could uh, label what type of shops these are as part of the query. I haven't done any of that yet as I pretty much set this up about an hour before I started recording, but I really want to showcase that because I think it's an incredible feature. Now we'll talk, little, talk a little bit more about my specific campaign prep and how I use NPCs really as a backbone to a lot of my world building, as well as how I use character players for that. So personally, um, you know, just on a time constraint, I don't have the time to build out a humongously fleshed out world, um, you know, a full campaign setting that is, you know, hundreds of pages long. I have to build out where my players are and where they may be going on the fly and sometimes a little bit beyond that. So I have some room to improv if I need to. Now, one of the ways I do this is by using this template. Um, so here we just have a basic description. I think I've mentioned this before, but you, unique descriptors, and I actually need to edit my template. You can see very much a living document, not description, descriptor. Um, and that's just a way to make them a little bit memorable. Maybe they wear a specific brooch. Maybe they have a hair tie or a type of sword they always carry. And then information. Whenever I come up with a new PC, NPC, I always find myself creating a bunch more of the world. And the way this happens is like this. So let's say I had a new NPC that the players had run across. So we're going to go ahead and make a new one. And we're just going to call this one, hmm, uh, let's call them Yax. That seems like a fun name. Now we're going to take Yax. We're going to insert that NPC description. First things first, let's add that person tag. And let's make sure that they're in the city of Geldof. Here, again, now if we jump back to here, we can see that Yax appears. If we were to remove Geldoth, or let's just remove the H, so say it was in Geldo, not Geldoth, they no longer will appear. Again, such a powerful feature. So let's go back to Yax. Here we are. Keep them in Geldoth. And first off, a faction. I'm going to say they belong to the Shrouds faction. Uh, this is my spy faction within the city of Geldoth. Their hair, uh, let's call it long and auburn. I also make sure that I add pronouns for all my NPCs and try to uh, keep them correct. So let's say that uh, Yax is they, them. Long auburn hair. I may be spelling that wrong. Eyes piercing green. You want to add a little bit of descriptors here to make it stand out. Fa face uh, rugged and bearded. Unique descriptor. They always carry a large bastard sword but on their hip, not back. And because of this, I would say they stand about 7.5 feet tall, probably a Goliath. You can add in here uh, voice descriptions or how you want to do your accents. I normally just come up with them on the fly and then uh, watch a video to remind myself if they're going to be in the next session. This is where I get all of my ideas, and this is in the information section. What will they share? So normally I just, I just like to come up with fun facts. So Yax is approximately 300 years old, but looks like they are 30. Now, why? Because once you write this information, your players will try and figure out the reasoning, especially if there's a big discrepancy in the understanding of the world. And let's say they had an ancient curse placed on them uh, in revenge for a raid on a village. The curse was placed 
and we're going to use our brackets here to auto link this by let's call this bin stout i don't know who bin stout is yet but i know they've placed an ancient curse on yaks to make bin stout an npc we'll just move them into here right now i'm not going to add the template just yet because we're still building out yaks normally you want about i say two to three of these depending on uh, how interesting you want this character to be now yaks runs an upscale in on the north side of the city and caters to the finest clientele he will share this list for about 50 gold and it's an open secret sometimes maybe getting on this list is a way to get your name out there as someone who's entering society let's just say uh, for the sake of time what can they can be convinced to share um, they can be convinced to share that they just want the curse lifted to finally be able to rest as let's say you know they're Goliath they should have died many many years ago and they're just tired of this um, and I might just put a DC here a DC 13 this could be intimidation persuasion whatever the players are looking for and what can they else can they be convinced to share um they want to increase their operation size if the curse can't be lifted and will pay for people to scout new locations they are interested in the let's call it the Raining residu Residuum Den as the location to expand. And here we've just built another part of our world. Presumably this is somewhere in the city. Um, let's put this back up into location. This is presumably somewhere in our city that, you know, sounds sounds a little sketchy. Uh, so they might, party might have to adventure there, beat up some bandits who have been squatting or maybe pay them to leave, help them find other housing. Depends what type of party you're running. And then what they won't share that motivates them. Um, again, this can be some more world, world building, but also just plays into how you act with the character. So what motivates them is uh, a deep regret for their raiding days. They act like they are proud of them to fit in, but actually deeply regret it. Uh, you can even see here, I messed up the pronouns because I wasn't thinking. Go back and just check those. Um, that way, if I read them off a little bit, I'll be reminded. And just that, uh, we've already built in a new NPC, a new place, a new potential hook. Um, and we could go through and add a tag as a hook here. And now in our uh, side book, we look at, okay, what are our trust, uh, what are our quest hook locations right now? Yaks and the Treasured Sands. Presumably, Yax owns the inn, uh, like we said here, and we can just give it a name. The inn is called the, let's go with the uh, avatar ref reference, the dragon turtle. Something recognizable, and my, my players are big avatar fans, so they'll probably appreciate that. And we'll just put that in uh, the inns folder. So that's about it for, uh, for this video. I know it's pretty short. Just wanted to update everyone on this tab section on the data view piece. And you can see here again, that is the ability to add SQL into your documents and automatically pull in information so that you don't have to type this out yourselves. One update, quick update actually, before I go um, in the license DM prep, I have added in these characters because these are always the characters I will be playing with and I don't want to have to add them in every time. So every time I make a new session prep that will appear. Thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. This has been part two. I'm not sure what part three will be just yet. It may be covering a new tool as opposed to Obsidian. Um, I'm right now torn between talking about maybe just virtual tabletops of you, such as above VTT or Roll20, uh, and talking a bit about D&D Beyond and how I've used that to prep in the past. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. If you like the channel, please toss a like and a subscribe. It really helps get the channel out there, and you'll uh, be notified the next time I come out with a new video. Thank you again, everyone. Have a good day.